and welcome back ladies and gentlemen as we get onto the red for game number two and what could potentially be the end of the series on this opening week here for the focus optimal series thank you so much to everyone that has tuned into this amazing series so far with uh, ikb definitely putting on a show for us yep. here game number one very very good and game number two possibly another as we do have 30 seconds left on the betting so make sure to get your bets in before the time runs out as we are underway with a very cheeky invade and this time it's actually uh the imperial knights invading game one had the air force going in uh and once again they get a deep ward and it's going to be replied immediately by a ward on the raptor pit here and is zach actually going to stick around here no he's just going to capture the uh, crystal there away from captor but he might actually run into the side of imperial knights here yep fully noited almost uh, almost took the charge first but that would be very bad for laning phase so uh possibly <laughs> not so zach is going to dance his way out a very nice job there so far as the wards go down the vision has been kept and teams start to disperse out so uh we will get that traded up as we put tf up against the Oriana for your scoreboard enthusiast members out there. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Because again, this lane swap, as you had stated, Wardeen taking that Alawi to the top side is going to be so interesting to see how he fares against the likes of Fully Norded. Yeah, and not only that, but uh, Lawi is a bit of a pocket pick here for Wardeen. So he plays it a lot. He's super comfortable on it. And because on the side of Imperial Knights, like they couldn't have predicted that. So trying to ban it was kind of awkward and weird. So I really like the fact that they can just flex it to the top lane. And Alawi also has a pretty decent matchup uh, into the Poppy as well. So definitely going to be quite safe there. Will be fine. What do you just skill up? Yeah, I just... I also find it very interesting if you look on the side of IKB, that is three different Biscuit members that they took. So three <laughs> members went the inspiration tree. They all said we want a few more munchies in the lane and said we're, we're going to hold you to that. So <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, find I, it very interesting to see three members on a team taking that. For sure. I mean, we now know who put their hands, who took the cookie from the cookie jar. Apparently it's all <laughs> of Imperial Knights here. And uh, for Air Force Gaming, none of them taking cookies here. Uh, I guess they don't need the rations for their trip. And it, it, the, the nice thing about it is it will give them a lot more sustain here in mm -hmm. lane as well. So they, it actually does give them a bit of an edge uh, in terms of just poking back and forth, which might become important, especially in that top side. Yeah, it's it's very dangerous. Again, if Wardeen is good with this Alawi, expect to see a lot of poke going down onto uh, Noided on this Poppy, right? Uh, Poppy, again, one of the great things is, again, under 50%, you start getting some reduction uh when it comes to armor and magic resist you're able to bulk up a little bit but that really doesn't mean much to an alawi who does that percent health damage who does that massive uh poke and it's just it's gonna be fearsome yeah but so far fully noted doing a really great job especially using the use of the passive so far has been able to just poke wardeen down and uh i mean while going below 50% gives him a bit of tankiness, keeping the enemy below 50% will give him much better trading. So I think Fully Noited more than happy to just pump out the damage for now and try and get an early lead as quick as he can. Ooh, nice little damage going down as, uh, as Noited has to back away, gets a slow, but again, gonna be okay. Level one in that tentacle pull is really not as strong as you would expect. So just uh, more of an annoyance than really a painful reminder of not getting hit by skill shots. For sure. And uh, unfortunately, if, any, if game one is anything to go by, the first couple of minutes here in game two is likely also going to be a bit passive here. Uh, and one of the things we're talking about in game one was seeing Wardeen on that Galio. Now we've got Royal Flush on Twisted Fate doing much the same thing with that Destiny. So uh, at level six here, I think Royal Flush really, really needs to make proactive plays uh, instead of just sort of sitting back and just farming up here. Yeah, gonna have to wait and see again. These squads both played an excessively quiet uh, early game in game number one. I don't think we saw first blood until about seven minutes in. And that was from, I believe, a tr double TP to the bottom lane. <laughs> Yeah, uh, was, so it was it was quite an excessive first blood. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not the uh, Air Force Creed that no man's left behind, but they they no <laughs> man was left behind. All five of them piled in. There was a double teleport on a single minion. It was beautiful, but mid lane Royal Flush can punish. Yep, might be able to, and Royal Flush drops to below 100 HP. Hood Rich already showing prowess once again. So 
definitely looks like it wasn't just that matchup. It seems Hoodrich definitely getting the better of a lot of these trades in the mid lane. Yeah, and one thing to be fair to Royal Flush with is that he is not a mid laner here. While Wardeen does have a pocket top lane pick, Royal Flush is pretty much mostly a top laner, so mid lane not his natural habitat. And with the TF passive as well, the loaded dice, uh, he can afford to fall behind, and he actually won't fall too far behind in gold. He's actually up in gold despite being down in CS, so he's cheating a little bit with that passive there. Yep, very nice to have. Again, thank you for correcting me. Royal Flush playing the mid lane this time. As the first dragon is on the table, that will be a cloud trick. So both sides very happy to pick that one up. Again, 10% CDR on your ultimate feels great on the likes of a Shockwave or a Destiny's ultimate or a, you know, just about anything that you can think of. So do you see Zach posturing on this bottom lane? But the lane is very much being pushed out. Yone's trying to look juicy. Uh, not Yone, sorry. Payday trying to look a little bit juicy in this bottom lane. But no dice as Zach goes straight back to farming. Yeah, unfortunately, the wave was just pushing out at that point. I was actually wondering if Zack was going to try and sneak into lane a little bit. Doesn't look like he'll uh, do so for now. And uh, one thing I want to point out, mid laners have hit six. So uh, fingers crossed for Destiny sometime in the next couple of minutes here. <laughs> that would be the hope. However, we see some early moves coming out of Captor and Orion as they both position around this dragon. Again, last time IKB were the, la uh, were the second team on that dragon position. So they do look like... They're not too worried about it. They say, okay, we'll position a little bit. Actually, is he doing it right now? He yeah. is. He's trying to solo it out, but it's on the ward. So they definitely know that it's being started. Yeah, they know it's being done, but it's actually just out of vision. So they can't see how healthy it is. And oh. Destiny finally coming down. Yep. He actually ults inside of the dragon pit. So that's going to be a nice pull off. And that's going to be AFG actually taking that dragon for themselves. Well played to Royal Flush and Zag for being able to pull off that very nice pressure drag. Yeah, and who would have thought the Air Force is the one who prioritizes the Cloud Drake and gets it here <laughs> to start the game off. Maybe it's an omen of things to come. We'll have to see. And uh, Royal Flush didn't get a gank off. They didn't get a kill with that first uh, Destiny there. But I actually really like the use of that. They couldn't see the health on the dragon. It was pulled out perfectly by Captor there. So they used the Destiny and that gives them vision. They know when to go in when to use that Destiny to scare people off. Nobody died, but I think that was a great play coming out of Air Force Gaming Gear. Yeah, feels good, man, that you're able to pressure out Captor, you know, this man. That has caused so much pain and anxiety in game number one, <laughs> and now you get to kind of stick it to him in pressure, because again, early game was not that strong for him. He had some trouble finding those early ganks. He's level six now, and still looking like he's struggling a little bit, right? So we're gonna get to wait and see if he's able to make those plays, or if he's going to be chunked out because this time around you have the zack you have the destinies uh in your pocket you are able to make those plays as air force gaming and be able to apply proactive movements through this early game yeah and you know you've got now lanes to look at on the side and the and mid as well in the side lanes it's actually air force gaming starting to win out with the allow we somewhat expected i mean if you're gonna lane swap someone out for a specific pick they have to be good at it and warding right now making a great case for it. You look at the bot lane though, the Caitlyn first pick, the queen of the bot lane, if you will, but she's actually down right now in CS. She's been pressuring great. Delta's just been shoving up that bot lane constantly, giving Zach the space to roam around, but mm -hmm. Zach's behind in farm. Caitlyn's behind in farm. So uh, I think Imperial winning the bot side while Air Force winning the top side. Yeah, and that definitely feels bad because if you're down in CS, you want to at least have one or two tower plates. They have no tower plays. They've barely been able to chip away at it. So, again, well done, like you said, by Jonas and Wish to hold that bottom lane. And the AFG duo definitely having some trouble, as we did see a visit from Captor, which immediately signals a Rift Herald take. I do like this pickup, as I think it's going to be dropped topside. Make sure Warding gets some nice gold in his pocket, able to pressure it down, as we already see the push towards the topside. Fully noited might be burning that flash. Yeah, unfortunately, it looks like Zach. Oh, he's actually going to go for it. And they do have a pink ward, so he can just walk in there with full confidence he's not going to be seen. Is Fully Noited going to step out? Yeah, he knows that the ritual was taken just a little bit ago, so he knows something is up. And we do see Captain on the bottom side. Here we go. Jump all the way in. That's going to be a very nice, oh. steadfast presence, keeping him safe, but still going to be quite a bit of damage. Yeah, unfortunately, Zach going flying in the instant deny. Nope, <laughs> the wall comes up and it gets blocked. But Captor just instantly matching that. He was bot side, peeked out, got spotted. They lose Herald. Well, he's going to stick around and they might go for the drive here. Yeah, 
I actually really, really dislike this play from Captor right now. He's going for the farm as top lane was pressured and he's not willing to dive. Again, this is a bot lane that, yes, has the Lulu with that uh, wild growth, but you're losing out on the trade. Three plates went down topside. Wardine and uh, Zach were able to pick that up. So gold swing very heavily on that top side of the map for them. I, I just dislike Captor in this instance. Again, you want to be aggressive with this Skarner, and you're just not. As we do see the Shockwave going down, Royal Flush actually walking directly in. This could be very dangerous. Captor says, hello, surprise in the jungle, <laughs> first blood. All right, he really wanted to prove me wrong there. Just really, really wanted to prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair to you, I, I really don't think that was necessarily communicated between Hoodrich and Captor. <laughs> I think it was more of a case of Royal Flush uh, guessing a little bit wrong there, went towards Captor and Captor going, what? Free minion, I'll take this, <laughs> and just finishing uh, Royal Flush off there. And unfortunate for Royal Flush, first blood going over the way of Imperial Knight. So a great start for them. And it's actually quite meaningful to try and set Royal Flush behind, because in a way you can think of him as a secondary jungler where he's just going to show up to a different lane and try and force a gank, right? That's how Destiny works. So if you keep him behind, he becomes little more than a stun bot when he shows up. And Hoodrich right now has been showing that he knows how to punish uh, on the Orianna, so uh, will be nice for Hoodrich to get leads that he can then try and snowball here against Royal Flesh here. Yeah, that is a hope. First items coming out. That is going to be an automatic pickup of Rod of Ages without the boots. I think Royal Flush actually has the inspiration tree. Uh, we'll have to double check that later and see if he actually decided to pick that one up. Uh, I do believe he did. So no, he actually went stopwatch. So he doesn't have the boots. Instead, opted just for a very pure first item buy, whereas Hoodrich decided to go for the Merc Treads early and building into that Archangels. Uh, very interesting choices by both these mid laners. And actually, no, you're right. He did go the Inspiration Tree. He actually oh. spent money to buy that. You can see the boots that just popped up there. So yeah, you, you called it perfectly right, Orbital. Uh, but yeah, Imperial Knight just running in and grabbing that uh, Ocean Drake there for themselves. Fully annoyed, just instantly teleporting top lane. I don't know if he'll be able to protect this turret, though, even though he teleported there. Yeah, this is why you're the color commentator and I'm the playable play, because all I got to do is talk about the fighting on the board as Wardine goes in with the tentacle, smacking around Noited, who actually teleported in. So that's a very heavy loss for him right there. He's going to try and hold, but this is such a devastating blow from him. Wardine definitely showing off that this lane swap was worth it. Yeah, and that's one thing you hate to see is when you teleport and instantly get chunked and lose all priority. Because now you have to go back to base and you can see Fully Noited just zoned off his own turret. That's going to be first turret. Going the way of Air Force Gaming here. Yep, nice little solid win. That's going to be five plates over to Wardine to split in there as that goes into the bounce house. Wish gets knocked up twice in a row, but that's going to be the dead charge coming out. Wish trying to flash away is able to get away, but that's going to be the body block coming out of Jonas. That's going to be the root as well. Wish burning down a little bit as Royal Flush has to flash away from the engage in the mid lane as captor burns his flash as well ultimate impale still up and available but royal flesh having some trouble in this mid lane right now and that was a key body block from Jonas. there wish uh barely getting out there alive burnt flash and heal in that engage so great gangs coming out of zach here he's applying pressure down meanwhile like you said where is captor he's impaled still not used right he's just farming up a storm here he is up some cs but uh, and he is up a level which is good but we want to see some proactivity coming out here. We had this problem in game one where Imperial Knights kind of set, sat back quite a bit till about 30 minutes and then they suddenly turned it on. And it's looking like they're on track to do that again here in game two so far. Yeah, and I will say it has been a little bit more proactive, right? That mid lane, we just saw Captor get in there flash for flash from the mid lane. Not amazing though, right? We do want to see those ultimates. We want to see those kill confirms. So even though he's being aggressive, the problem still remains. He's not getting anything with the ultimate specifically. He's burning fast or flash, but you should be able to pick up one or two. So a little bit problematic. We'll have to see if he's able to make it work. Again, one kill so far in a 14 and a half minute <laughs> game. These guys are just like, all right, well, listen, we don't want to fight. We just want to look good on the scoreboard. So farm up as much as you can. We'll meet each other at 30 minutes and then we'll decide the game there. Yeah, and with names like Knights and Air Force Gaming, you don't think of like passive things like air force planes go zoom especially like if you're a u.s <laughs> air force you you just blow things up like you, you don't ask questions you, you you just go night same thing you charge in but so far we've not been seeing them really uh, charge anywhere here and it looks like they're actually going to call for a lane swap here uh interesting choice i 
think fully Nordic is struggling against Wardine, to be fair. But them doing this, uh, I think, well, actually, no, it's a good choice because Harold's coming up, I guess. Uh, so they want to make sure they've got numbers on the top side. But Delta is going to be able to match that. He just based is going to be running up there right now. Yep, going to be running towards. That is going to be the teleport available for Hoodrich. Very nice. Uh, you know, you'd be surprised how many teams send the one without teleport to that lane to clear, and it's very, very yeah. sad. See a global check, but here we go. Jump in from Zach. He's going to get the jump off. The stun goes into capture, and all of a sudden, the Scorpion is effectively squashed as the rest of the members do roam up. But that is going to be the Rift Herald available, but they just might lose mid lane for this. Not sure if this trade is worth it. You do see Royal Flush and Wardine looking to try and hold it off. That's going to be the root going down. Royal Flush does get the gold card off, able to keep everyone at bay, but that's going to be Shockwave only catching one. Wardine in the back line, throwing out the tentacles. Big damage coming out as they slap everyone for quite a bit of health. One more Q might do it. No, just the W slam as Wardine picks up a kill for himself. They get the Rift Herald. They get another kill on top top of it and that is going to be afg saying we pulled out the pocket picks what you got yeah and that, that's like the issue right there is you can't fight afg in a static position there you can't fight in the middle of all those tentacles that leap of faith just does way too much and now they just go straight away drop shelly they've got a numbers advantage they are gonna look to try and get the turn i don't think they can but they're certainly gonna try yeah and and so i i want to just point out this is where I do agree with some analysts that are currently stating that the priority put on second Rift Herald is a little bit aggressive for what else is on the map, right? Yeah. They fought hard to get that Rift Herald, and they got three-fourths of the Outer Tower. <laughs> I don't see that as <laughs> worth as much as you would expect. No, and the other thing they did was they kind of surrendered priority on that Drake as well. And that's the other hop. The conversation has always been Drake or Herald. And in this case, they surrendered Drake for Herald potentially. Infernal coming up in five seconds. You can see everybody from Air Force Gaming just running in as fast as they can right now. Uh, they did just go back and buy. So they are sitting on a bit of an item lead here right now. Uh, we'll have to see if it does manage to pay off in this upcoming uh -oh. fight. Yep, Captor trying to look for that Impale, but again, no flash on him, so he's going to have some problems. Dragon being started up here, kicked up. They're going to try and drag it out as best they can. Hoodrich says, hey, I might, no, okay, we'll drag it out, we'll drag it out. Oh, no, 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 we really want to get out of here. So there you go, pinch back in the back line. That is going to be the hold as they are spotted. But this dance is looking so dangerous for IKB right now. Yeah. A little bit. Oh, very nice, steadfast block. Coming out as that's going to be the death charge going out. Shockwave lands on a three. Big shockwave from IKB. Nice win for them. But that's going to be warding. Signaling back with the ultimate. The tentacles are being thrown around. That's a two for two so far. But AFG are bleeding as they go low. That's going to be the bouncing grenade. As Wish picks up two for himself. And a four for two overall. And the patience pays off here from the Imperial Knights. They start up the Drake. They instantly back out there. And <laughs> of course, you couldn't call, not going to be able to find anything at all. Payday gets out alive, and uh, Captor finally getting to use his Impale there, and they <laughs> win the Dragon Fight. And th that fight, a lot of it came off a beautiful block from uh, Fully Noited there. Uh, the, you, the fight starts out, they back out immediately, and everything looks like it's on the left, but Fully Noited goes in, and that steadfast presence instantly just denies everybody there. Warding wasn't able to get into the fight. A beautiful, huge shock wave, shock wave as well to finish things off. And it looked like Royal Flush actually went down to the Inferno drink there, unfortunately. So everything just not going the way of Air Force Gaming. They got caught between a rock and a hard place there, and there was nowhere to run at the end of it. Yep, and that, I mean, the game was looking like a, uh, AFGs to start taking control of, and yet they just fall very quickly and and it kind of worries me that they do this right they have the advantages right wardine very very strong in the current moment 410 has a black cleaver but looking around right now ikb seems so on point this might be the point that they want they catch the support yone is able to get over the wall but still stunned up doesn't get three ultimates used on him and he actually gets out <laughs> That was three ultimates, or uh, two ultimates burned on him, and they it, couldn't kill him. How bad does that feel? I mean, you wouldn't expect it out of a behemoth, a titan of the depths there, but Yon is dancing ballet in the jungle there, gets out alive. He's, that was a great escape. And I mean, I, I thought 
AFG did the right thing. Like that was the pick mm -hmm. you wanted to get. You did everything you could. It, that was just Yone playing beautifully there. But unfortunately, even though while that looks good, it's still not solving their side wave problem because Vordine is still punishing fully noited in any side wave where they are matching up. And it's not likely at any point during this game that we're going to see fully noited really able to handle that 1v1. So Imperial Knights needs to look for those 5v5s, like what they just pulled off at the Dragon Pit. They're strong together and they need to play to their strong strengths as a team fighting team. Yeah, I, I think a big point as well. I don't really understand this, but Fully Anointed is sitting on four different components right now. I, I I can't see where any of this really amounts to anything except in 27 minutes, where he completes randomly three items at once, and you're just like, where did that come from? But 20 minutes in, and you still haven't completed a single item, signals some complications with how you're trying to read uh, the opponent, right? You first went for this Bomby Cinder, then you went for the Spectre's Cal, and then you went Thorn Mills. Decide on something, get the item and the core defensive up, and then you'll be okay. I feel having four different components is not helping him at all right now. No, unfortunately, definitely not. And unfortunately, he's pulling a bit of that bargain bin special here because he wanted the uh, Bramble Vest and this Bomby Cinder. That's very common to see those two items picked up separately uh, just to deal with Wardeen. Uh, and then the Spectre's Cow, I felt like he was thinking maybe Royal Flush might show up. I'm not sure because really there's not a ton of magic damage uh, coming his way here in isolation. And like you said, he that's not a good look on him. Uh, he has now completed the Adaptive Helm. So interesting choice i'm not quite sure who that's really targeted at it might be the technical smashing into him but again i don't know if that actually counts because again the auto attack trades come in as well so i'm not overly sure if this is the itemization choice that he wants but so far that is the route he is going and so far he's only died once so i do agree that he has done well and at least uh you know kind of softening the blow of warding's constant split pushing Okay, uh, yeah, and uh, he did lose the turret though, unfortunately, bot side, but I actually think that's fine at this point. Losing the outer turrets on the side waves means that Wardy now has to overextend here in order to sort of keep on pushing. And you can see a collapse potentially coming in. Unfortunately, no, Jonas went the wrong way, so uh, <laughs> they're not going to go in on that one for now. But yeah, he's going to have to overextend, and so the rest of... Um, are they going for a Baron? Oh, this is a risky call coming here. They tried it, but got spotted. So very, very nice Scryers being dropped by Wish. Says, okay, you can't pull that cheeky one on us. As Dragon is coming up, this is Infernal Soul, uh, mind you. So the second highest priority soul available, as we had the first highest priority in the first game, and that already brought a six Dragon game. Now we potentially <laughs> get another six to seven Dragon game. This is going to be insane. Yeah, potentially, but right now it is going to be the Imperial. Oh, no, uh, <coughs> pardon me, the Imperial Knight setting up for the Drake here first. They're in the pit, they're in position, and we've already seen what happens when both these teams go at it five v five. And I don't think we're going to see a huge difference here. It's going to come down to Wardine because Wardine's the biggest team fight strength here on the side of uh, Air Force Gaming. So if they can stop Wardine like they did the last time, I think they're going to be spot on for this fight. Yeah, that's going to be Destiny's call is down. So that's the ultimate out, and that's going to be the jump in. But big ult by Wardian catches oh. everyone by surprise. But look at the damage in return. Big ultimates are coming up back and forth. Tentacles grab two, and the damage just isn't there for IKB. They fall in mass as Hoodrich Brad is trying his best to stay alive. Everyone is low, but the damage is enough. Wardian. The monster himself from the depths drags three and Dragon goes away of AFG. <laughs> the war team there. But just as I was saying, the one thing that can turn the fight for AFG in a team fight is Wardine. Well, he did it. He just stepped up, manned up, and went hard in that. The flash into that. You can't sit fast presence of flash. Wardine gets in there. The tentacles just smashing away. And then, unfortunately, Wish opted to start the curtain call there. So he wasn't pumping out the damage in that fight. He was sort of far back just using the curtain call. And that didn't work out. There's no sustained damage. And they end up just losing that one, uh, despite Hoodrich trying to turn things with the Shockwave there. Yeah, and it's so painful to see that, right? Captor tried his best to get that pull in, but you go for the obvious bait, you know? It's like a catfish seeing an arm sticking in the water, but you're caught at the end of the day, right? You went for the bait, you lose that fight. 
and now you're behind. Yes, it's seven to six. Yes, the gold is fairly close, but now you're you're fighting an unstoppable juggernaut. Warding now building into the death stance. This man, unless you get some grievous wounds or anything of the sort, you aren't going to be burning through him very quickly. Yeah, and the name of this game here for the side of Imperial Knights is stopping Wardine. They just need to make sure he's not able to pull that off again. Good news is his flash is down and they're going for it. All right, this is it. Three members. Can they do it? Possibly not as fully annoyed. It has to run away. That's what he's done. He gets it anyway. He gets the kill. This man is a monster. He's life stealing stuff. He's back to 50 HP. Wardine, Wardine, you mad man. He's going to get another kill. He might get another kill. He doesn't. He took down one with him though, and they're gonna get the bear. What? The, what did Warden just do? <laughs> oh, that he almost picked up Captor as well. That is, that is ridiculous. There. And the, the, the rest of Air Force Gaming just basically went, Warden, you got this. We trust you. They just turn and burn the Baron immediately, and they picked themselves up a nice, clean Baron there. No vision at all, unfortunately, for the side of Imperial Knights. They just completely weren't in position. We're going to get to take a look here at this incredible 1v5. They think they have Wardine, but they don't have damage there. Wish isn't there. They get a great shockwave from Hoodridge, but where's the follow-up damage? They don't have it. They drag him around. Great. So, but his tentacles, you, you, when you impale him, his tentacles keep slapping. And Fully Noited gets just slapped off the face of the rift. And now <laughs> Captor's having to run away. He's going to get exterminated. Yonis running in to try and save him. And he just barely gets up by with a sliver of health. If anybody from Air Force Gaming had showed up, that could have been a very, very different fight. But you can't argue with Baron. Well, now the worst part is, right? He won a 1v5 technically on his own by killing one. He might take two down. He has Death's Dance available to him. He is not going to die because I think in the middle of that, one of the most feels bad moments, he gets one, uh, one W off and heals up from about 20% HP to about 55. As you see the curtain call being opened up here. There's going to be a few hits right there, but that's going to be the teleport. Wardine teleporting right in the middle of them. Says hello, but that's going to be the <laughs> hammer of justice saying, nope, we're not dealing with that today. The big ultimate coming out of Poppy to save the team from certain destruction. As yeah. that is going to be a teleport for ultimate as a hold still remains in the mid lane. Yeah, and that's been the start of the game so far. Wardine trying to say hello to Fully Noited as much possible, and Fully Noited just going, nope, goodbye, as soon as <laughs> Wardine shows up. Uh, but unfortunately, like you said, if you're shooting a teleport for an ultimate, the ultimate's temporary. The teleport has permanently moved Wardine to that area, so they managed to just brute force that turret down. And again, they, they have Baron, right? This is what they need to do. They need to take advantage of this Baron buff. As, as for Imperial Knights, losing one turret to a Baron buff is actually a very, very low cost as it is. They mm -hmm. just need to keep stalling this out. And for now, Air Force Gaming has backed out. And once again, where do we see? Wardine split pushing. Again, he's hyperextended. You can go to gank him. And I think that's what uh, Imperial Knights needs to keep doing. Keep punishing him. But this time, bring Wish with you because uh, he didn't have <laughs> enough damage last time. Bring, bring literally everyone and don't walk in after someone else dies. That's, that <laughs> is their whole game plan right there. Wardine's strong enough. So we finally, I'm so happy to see this. We finally see the Executioner's Blade. Uh, Executioner's Calling, I believe, uh, on Wish. So he has a Grievous Wounds item. The problem is, the rest of AFG have understood this. So they are grouping around him and they might just get the pick. There we go. Very nice block. Steadfast Presence is going to knock Zach right back in, but that's going to be a teleport on the back line. The Colossus might be there. Shockwave lands on the two, but they get the drag on the Royal Flush. He doesn't get any damage though. This is a big split as everyone is able to stay alive. Very nice job by IKB to uh, detach from that fight and disengage, but well done to AFG for pulling that fight right as Dragon is spawning. And we see a teleport coming in as well. Round two. Yep, but that's going to be a jump in. As again, Wardine able to get the tentacle down. Big damage coming out. Suppress goes in, but that's going to be the Caitlyn firing off at the back line of Wardine. Tanking all of the curtain call. Rat Wish is going to fall. That's going to be Ace in the whole claiming that one. The shutdown is there. Fully annoyed. It is going to get locked up in the middle of the fight. Captor running away. Can't run from a Lowy triple kill for Delta Sand. Hello. Thank you so much. Air Force here to play. <laughs> yeah, and Wardine this time hunting Captor down. Not happy that Captor got away the last time. Wanted to make sure he squishes the bug this time as well. And just overwhelming strength right now coming out from Air Force Gaming. I do believe uh, Baron actually expired by the time round two started. So they didn't have the uh, Baron buff bonus at that point in time. But they're just 
so strong and so far ahead. And I, I really question going back in like that for round two, because it was like Hoodrich was, I think, the one in front of that fight there uh, for the side of Imperial Knights. They already lost the first fight. They were low on health. Jonas doesn't have teleport, could not fight again, but they chose to stick around a little bit too long. That's third trade. You can afford to give that up and you don't lose too, too much. Sure, it gives you a lot of pressure for the uh, incoming Infernal Soul, but it's five minutes later. You're already behind. They still, they just had Baron buff. They just pushed a Baron advantage. Th there's no need to pick this fight here. Take the five minutes, give up that one Drake, come back again for Soul. But unfortunately, they didn't. They get, they lose a lot of members as well as that Infernal Drake. Yeah, very devastating to see that fight happen as now the QSS has already been paid by War Dean, which honestly I feel is quite a bit of respect from a man that's 9 3 and 3 um, in the entire gauge so far. This man is by far the strongest man or strongest woman on the rift, I should say. As Alawi is sitting at three and a half items, pretty much a core build complete. And again, only one Grievous item on the side. Hoodred finally completed the Leandri, so a little bit of health chunk coming out. But it's still such an uphill battle. And it will continue to be so for the next little while here. Because the other thing that uh, happened in that fight was that nobody could reach Delta. <laughs> like throughout that entire fight, Delta was pretty much completely untouched. So even if Wardine falls off, even if you catch up with Wardine, then you've got the next problem, which is how do we catch Delta? Because Delta is just going to free fire from the back. The Storm Razor supplies the stove. if you're trying to run into it. The traps, the net, there's just very little they can do. And it looks like we are going to have a pause. Looks like a Fully Noited is having a little bit of latency issues here. So they're going to try and fix that. Uh, and yeah, hopefully it'll be a short pause here. Yeah, and, and this gives us a little bit of time to kind of go over what's happened in this game because I want to point something out. You called it at the beginning, right? At the beginning, you said IKB have a few issues trying to get to the back line, and it is coming to full bloom here at the 31 and a half minute mark, right? We're seeing them have issues. Captor, honestly, as a Skarner, running in directly with no speed ups on him and still trying to finish what looks to be a Trinity Force. He is having so many complications right now, or he's actually going for Black Cleaver and I think Iceborne Gauntlets. He is having just the hardest time doing anything in this game. Yeah, and I'm I'm actually not even sure if that's an Iceborne or a, like again. He's going for the bargain bin special once again. We saw him with fully anointed. <laughs> Captor's doing it too. He's got you know the uh, the phage and the sheen and the glacial shroud, right? Like it's gonna build like you said either Iceborne or Trinity. But in the meantime, why why do that? You know what I mean? Like, why not just finish an item first, commit to something? Uh, but he he kind of doesn't. And a, a lot of this, you know, going back to your original point, was that they need to find a flank position. Um, and mm -hmm. it's it's up to Captor or Jonas to really find the flank because a, a poppy flank isn't anywhere near as scary as a Skarner flank. Um, and the, right now, it's prevented very heavily by Wardine because if you're trying to flank a lot of times, you're running into Wardine on the way. If you go to flank, it leaves your team exposed where Wardine has shown zero hesitation in flashing in. And uh, yeah, like if, if Wardine just goes in, there's nothing you can do. And actually, you can see on screen right now, Wardine just aggressively going in and he's zoning everybody out. There's no opportunity to flank there. And even if you do flank, now what are you going to do? You're running to Royal Flush with a gold card to your face. Uh, Delta could set a trap up. So if Captor goes in alone, he's not going to be able to survive. He needs more backup. And that's just from being behind in the game right now. Uh, they need a bit of time to scale. But if the game keeps going up, they're not going to outscale. They're at best going to match the side of Air Force Gaming. So a lot of it's going to come down to trying to find a catch in a choke point and trying to catch the back line. They really need to catch the back line. I know Wardeen's really, really scary, but the best thing you can do to deal with Wardeen right now is to ignore him. Just run past him, run away from him. That's fine. But it's best if you can run past him and access the back line. If you kill everybody else, you can kill Wardeen. It's possible. We've seen it happen before. It took five people, but you can do it. So if you kill everybody else and it's only Wardeen left, you can take him down. I... I, I would agree with you at some points. However, we have some complications because, uh, again, he is very strong right now. He's 9-3-3. Three, and three. That that plan should have been put in a while ago as we do see Royal Flush dancing in the back line as it is going to be a Baron attempt. There's a last-ditch effort here. Again, Wardine on the inhibitor. 
This is absolutely do or die. Hibner Tower goes down. Everyone's getting poked out. Wish down to about half health. They're just going to go all the way in. That's going to be a jump in. Senpai hasn't been able to keep away. That's going to be Zach bouncing around in the back line. Teleport coming out. Curtain Call has been pulled. And health bars are extremely low. Baron oh. recharging now. Shockwave grabs Ward, but it's a disengaged Shockwave. That might have been the most perfect engage that they needed. But they don't pull it off. And everyone resets. But Inhib goes down. AFG played that so freaking well. Yeah, that was beautiful, and I feel so bad right now for Imperial Knights because they they had so many great plays there. That four-man shockwave was great. Fully noited, just fully noited. I have not given this man enough credit this game. His steadfast presence has been on point repeatedly. He has denied Zach so many times on the engage. I don't think there's been a single solid good slingshot which actually knocked people up because the Sidfast presence just keeps saying nope every time he tries to get past fully noited. So they, they get that as well, but there's just not enough damage and so they can't finish off the fight and so at best they get a disengaged baron but they lose an inhibitor for it so definitely not a worthwhile trade and that was the best shot you're gonna get Wardeen was not present for 80 percent of that fight there yeah that's about the best you can do as Jonas steals away the uh scuttle a uh, little bit of a cheeky pull right there as dragon gonna be up in a minute and a half here uh now big question taking a look at the entire map I do want to ask you because of the fact that we are on soul point once again for afg we've been in this situation before however again it was a little bit different wardian was not this fed question for ooh. oh that was mean <laughs> i'm a mid lane player and i know that you, he broke the cardinal rule of taking the red buff right there sorry i had to point that out but, yeah <laughs> uh, again dragon coming up i mean Wardine has done so well. What do IKB need to do at this point uh, to really find a win? As, this. Yeah, I know. As I say that, they go all the way in. They're going to find the suppression, but no one is there to back it up. They find the impale, but no damage to follow up. Royal Flush is able to get away. Everyone's running down now, fully annoyed, rushing as quickly as they can. Wardine, a little bit ahead of him now. And that was so disjointed. <laughs> Yeah, it was a little bit. I think they, they were a little split. They weren't sure 100% how quickly Wardine could get to that fight. Because Captor got the Impale. That should have been an easy kill the moment that Impale mm -hmm. went down. They had all the damage there. But they they kind of split there and you could see the split focus. They kind of wanted it, kind of didn't. So they didn't get all the damage down. And that means uh, everybody was able to get out. Zach able to get out and everything. And now oh, we're Wish, getting a repeat. Wish, what are you doing, my man? He was face checking. He was pulling a double lift right there. That's going to be a shockwave landing on no one, I believe. Keeper's verdict gets Wardian out of the fight, but that doesn't matter as Royal Flush is able to pick up Wish. That's one kill for zero as Dragon goes over as IKB have to defend their base. Wish, you can't be face checking like that. Nope, and we, we saw it in the last Dragon fight where it's Hoodridge doing the face checking. They're going to... They lose most likely the Nexus turret as well. Nope, they just barely managed to save it. But again, it's a sliver of health and they're going to have to give up Baron for sure. So uh, Air, Force gonna, Air Force Gaming going to be able to pick up Soul and Baron. And they're already so far ahead. They can just go back, spend a nice holiday shopping back in base and just push in to end the game after this. And it's going to be on Imperial Knights desperately trying to find a way. We did see a glimmer of hope. The uh, Keeper's Verdict there from Fully Noited. Pushing Wardeen away is actually massive. If they can do that again and only hit Wardeen, then they they have uh, I, I hesitate I hesitate to say a chance. They have a theoretical <laughs> chance. It's okay. It's improbable, but it's possible that they can win that five v four. I I have to agree with you, right? We give teams the credit where they deserve it, right? We always give the credit where it seems uh, deserved. And again, you gave credit. They have the ultimates available but this team again we saw it in game number uh, one as well ikb have a few issues syncing up their ultimates and seeking up their engages this has become very apparent now that they're on the back foot now that they are the ones defending and we really have to wait and see so taking a look as well i mean uh hoodrich actually went for the spellbinder which i personally dislike on noriana right I think just going for the Rabadons might have been the better choice into like a Void Staff, right? Mm -hmm. Because now you kind of, you're doubling up on very, very high cost items for only hard burst uh, in return. And that, I mean, might be some problems. I just do see Zach getting chased away, but that's going to be the ultimate in from uh, Twist of Fate as he pulls the Destiny card and makes his way to mid lane. And they have to race back to lane because guess who wasn't there in the mid lane? It was Wardeen and he's pushing in. They need to kill Wardeen here. If they can't kill Wardeen, this is game. 
Yeah, I mean, they have everything that they need. This could be the shutdown. They get every single ultimate. He gets bounced, house around. He gets bounced in the air. I don't think he stops the crowd yet. They literally didn't let him do it. I mean, they fully juggled him into oblivion. Look on the side of the map, four ultimates down. He was not allowed to play the game. Nope, and that's exactly what they have to do, because if you let Wardeen press R, you die. Wardeen did not press R, and that was the reason why they won that, and now they can try and run this down and look to try and turn the sides here. All right, they found Payday. They four shots on them. Hook misses, but they get the big chunk of Payday. He goes down. They got the kill. They finally found two kills. Another big chunk out of Delta. I was bashing on Hoodridge for the double, uh, the double full AP item. He got but he is doing some work, and they found the pick as well. They're pushing all the way in, and they found the third one as well. Caitlyn falls as they race back to take care of their base. And I said it's improbable, but they did it. Imperial Knights Black pull off the improbable dream here. Now, they just need to do that a couple more times, say about maybe three times, and they're back in the game. But that influx of gold uh, was absolutely massive, and that gold actually from shutting down Wardeen went the way of hood rich here so uh will be a bit of a nice infusion and you know you were talking about the rabidons would have been a better pick up the death cap well now hood rich has picked it up he's mm -hmm. almost full build here uh and i think that burst damage is actually going to be absolutely massive at this point i think hood rich just needs to thread the ball into royal flesh and delta if he can hit a, a spellbound shockwave uh with the rabidons and everything he might actually flat out just burst delta and royal flesh uh, almost dead right away and they won't be able to participate in the fight and then it's just Wardine you have to deal with again and they can do it we've seen it just juggle him juggle Wardine <laughs> long enough as long as the tentacles don't show up you're okay <laughs> literally if they don't move we're okay that's the game plan don't let the character move <laughs> yeah I, I mean, love it so much. if you really think about it, Wardeen's not the problem here. It's mm -hmm. the tentacles. If you stop <laughs> the tentacles from showing up, you're okay. So as long as you don't let him press R, they actually can kill him. And he's starting to get a little squishier. Death Dance was a great defensive item, but it relies on you hitting people. Mm -hmm. So if you can't hit people, the life still doesn't work. It's a lot less effective. And he's specced heavily into armor right now, so Hoodrich can shred him. Yes. And I do agree with that, Mark. We'll definitely have to wait and see if they can pull off again. Last fight, he did not get to use the QSS. Again, QSS can only cleanse off the suppression and stuns. Can't cleanse knockups. That is not able to happen in these games. As we do see the fight going down, that's going to be Zach jumping all the way out. And keep in mind, Zach has not died uh, after that first death. So, uh, you know, in the last about... 25 30 minutes i think he has not died at all so the man has kept his life and his passive in play so far that is the infernal soul though already down so that is going to make everything a little bit more difficult they saw the split destiny has been called as it is going to be the ultimate coming out very nice bounce off of the plants but they pull him back that's gonna be zach in the middle of the back line but Jonas is gonna be the sacrificial pawn they get the chunk down very nice uh, stopwatch going down for the Zack, but he is going to split into the Cell Division. Teleport coming out, and that might be the fight that they need. Fully noited. Gonna hold steady. That's gonna be the Dragon as well. Tentacles go down. Shockwave. I wanna see where that Shockwave is gonna go. Throw it out in the middle, but none to be found. Wardeen finding the pulls that they need. Two for one for the side of AFG as they are looking to storm this space. And Orbital, why you gotta do Zack dirty like that, man? Oh, wait, <laughs> hold on. Yep, this might be the pull that they want. That's going to be the jump in. Big damage coming out. Wish almost dead. Shockwave lands, but only onto one member. No real damage coming through. And there it is. Inhibitor goes down. Big ultimates are down as well. Wish barely staying alive. They say, okay, we don't want to deal with it anymore. We took most of your base. We'll go back and reset. Yeah, and first of all, Caster Curse is very real. Orbital just jigs Zack. He went down. And second of all, I take back what I said about being vulnerable to magic damage oh because that lifeline that came through on that Sterics gauge for Wardeen was disgusting. Absolutely. We do see the curtain call coming out. They're trying to find a pick here. Again, Wardeen very, very slowed out. But, I mean, Wish, it feels like he has no damage almost. He is doing minimalized damage with this ultimate. He is looking to try and play it strong. Here comes the teleport coming out as well. Hoodrich looking like he wants to hold. Nice little charge keep warding out of the fight. And that's going to be big tentacles coming out. That's a four or five man ultimate. And that's going to be the trade. Fully noted. They found one pick. Payday goes down. Two go down. But the tentacles are still in play. Back but look base, at base. the base. Destiny has called. And the <laughs> game might be over. 
We take a look at Royal Flush. He's just taking the game away. That's going to be a recall coming back. He almost gets it. He's going to dance all the way in, but gets knocked up, gets chunked out, gets pulled in, gets killed, goes into the Zanyas. But this just might be his death. He does fall, but he got the Nexus Towers. This is an open base game, ladies and gentlemen. And the and one thing that Air Force got while Royal Flush was busy getting hit by everything over at the Nexus was the Elder Drake here. And it's going to be on both Zac and Delta. And that's super, super important because the Elder Drake actually procs off of proximity. Uh, like, or Sorry, not proximity, but it, you need to deal with damage. And Delta is the one who's able to deal damage to pretty much everyone in these fights. So it's really solid to put on him or Wardeen. So Delta has it, which means any fight that comes out now is going to be huge. Uh, Imperial Knights are making a desperation play here for Baron. But they are they have numbers advantage, but their base is open. They have to be mindful of that, that their base is open. Inhibitors down, they've got supers pushing up the ball. Lane. Yeah, and I also don't know why they're trying this. Capture's still in base. They don't have the juggler. <laughs> So Woodridge so takes half his health and damage. Now they're finally trying to go for it, but the super minions are basing in. That's going to be the dragon. They found the hook that they want. They found the kill potentially as well. Zack bounces all the way out. Current call comes out one more time, but I'm not sure this is what you want to do. They find the damage a little bit. Oh, Zack taken down below about 150 HP, but they found now Wardeen. He's getting caught out. That's going to be the death charge as well. They're going to try and chase a little bit of damage going out but there pops a staring game. he just goes massive this feels so bad if you're playing on ikb side yeah and i mean you knew the risk when you picked Jin. you're never gonna have a huge tank buster with Jin, mm -hmm. and you're running into the huge armor thing that is wardeen he's got uh 206 armor here so he's reducing two-thirds of any physical damage coming across right now four shot hurts but when you've got that much armor, it hurts a lot less here. And now they have to fight this Baron, but you can already see Hoodrich has to go back to base once again. They can't leave the base. They're just going to abandon this one. But the problem is I don't think you have a chance if they have Baron. Now they'll have supers. They have Baron buff. They can just push in, take all the inhibitors here. Yeah, what you're banking on right now as the Baron falls is Hoodrich to be able to get that all-important void staff he's trying to aim for it he's sitting on 1580 i don't think that's enough to pick it up i think you need 1800 so he is just shy of having that big burst damage potential yeah you can see him trying to race out to the base right now he's trying to hold it off if he gets that the wombo combo can be massive so that is what they're looking for top lane getting poked out here right now everyone's stacking up they're gonna try and let this fall but now they have to hold this looks like the push to end it all right now Everyone's kind of grouped up. Inhibitor does go down after a couple more shots. And that is actually, they're taking a long time for this. Feels bad. There it is. It goes down. It goes down. <laughs> Cannon minion for the win. Yep. Uh, I mean, minions, we do it slow, but we get it done. And they're going to just rotate straight into that mid lane inhibitor as well. And that'll be double super minions coming in as well with Baron buff. This, I, I want to say it's do or die, but... At this point, even if you do, you're still facing a huge uphill battle. Uh, <laughs> the Knights are going to have to mount one last final charge here. Yeah, and, and thank God this is game number two, right? But there is a <laughs> very nice holdout. That's going to be the Keeper's Order. Keep it every while. They found the pick. They found the hook. But that's only on a payday. The big carries are still up. This could be very, very dangerous. Yone is taken down to about 50% HP. Big crit going down. War Dean taken down to about 3 fourths health, but going to heal that one up very very quickly but they got the slow this is might what they want again he doesn't really have anything oh that's oh. gonna be a nice pop on that item that's gonna be the pick as roll flush has to go golden what are afg doing they get caught out left and right however again the base is open so for the time being ikb are still in this game that's incredible. IKB doing amazing <laughs> right now. They just keep, every time their backs are up against the wall, they somehow seem to find the picks. It was Wardeen previously, now it's Payday, and it's Royal Flush. They're, it, it's incredible how they're holding up. They've actually even the kill score here. It's 16 to 16. And all AFG had to do was wait. They had double super minions pushing up. That was the wave with the double supers. And they just decide to stick around a little bit too long. And now Wardeen? Uh, Wardeen is found, gets hit a little bit, but that's gonna be the E, that's gonna be the shockwave pulling him in, but Hoodridge goes very, very low, gets the heal coming out, gonna oh. be able to stay alive, but look at the damage coming through, they're trying to check him out, he gets the kill in the back by Wardeen, the monster, he's still life stealing. he's still at 50 years energy, he's just gonna work for his spot, the back man is there, he's gonna get chunked out though, might fall here, there he goes, but he took two down with him, the madman was their wish, Tanks the ultimate coming up, but they have to get back to heal. This is so bad. That is the first 
death for Hoodrich in such an exceptionally close game oh. here. That feels so bad. Look at the jump in, which immediately chunked up and taken down. Royal Flush redeeming himself from that death. This looks like it. AFG rushed the base with that teleport. They find the ace and they find the game in a 47 burn, uh, barn burner. And I'm sitting here looking at the victory screen and I'm still not sure that IKB went down here because they survived back to back to back like desperation plays here. And I can't believe at the end of it, all it took was Wardeen, Wardeen 1v5-ing there to really end the game, taking out two people. This is this is nuts. You know how I, I, I was I was super impressed with Wishes Callista, and I was mm. saying they need to ban this. Well, guess what? They absolutely need to ban the Lawi. You cannot give Wardeen a Lawi. That that is not okay. Yeah, looking at the damage charts there, Wardeen's his damage bar is significantly bigger here uh, than anybody else. Uh, to be fair to Wishes, Jin did a lot of damage as well. Just wasn't able to finish anybody off because they were all tanks, but. Uh, still, that's disgusting. That's not okay. He doubled the ADC damage, and the ADC was Caitlyn, the queen of the bot lane.